Hello and welcome to Access Asia. I'm Yuka Huaye, and in this special episode, we'll take you to China to take a closer look at the Communist Party Congress, a days-long conclave that meets once every five years to reshape the country's leadership. This year's is particularly closely watched, with President Xi Jinping expected to further cement his rule. It's a massive gathering of China's political elite that takes place every five years. Around 2,300 delegates, chosen from different sectors and ethnic groups around the country, represent nearly 97 million members of the Communist Party at Beijing's Great Hall of the People. This year's is the 20th edition and is particularly significant, an occasion for President Xi Jinping to further consolidate power and take China into a new era of strongman rule. Joining me is France 24's former China correspondent, Charles Pellegrin. Charles, uh, good to have you here. Now, first of all, what is the Party Congress and how important is it for China and for the world? Well, it's really the mother of all political party conferences. And because it's a one-party state, it doubles up as a, an essential national meeting as well. It takes place every five years in the heart of Beijing on Tiananmen Square in the Great Hall of the People. And close to 2,300 delegates from all over the country representing all kinds of party organizations uh, convene there. And they represent 97 million members of the party inside the country. And it's significant because of two things. First of all, this is where the general ideological direction of the party and the nation is given. And it's also, this is where personnel changes happen. The delegates nominate the Central Committee, who nominate uh, the Politburo and the Standing Committee of the Politburo, which is the inner sanctum of power. And within that small group of people is the General Secretary, who currently is Xi Jinping. So this is where political careers are uh, made and ended as well. Mm. Charles, thank you for that. We're going to come back to you in a second. In the 10 years since coming to power, President Xi Jinping has led a drive to make the country an economic superpower through his Belt and Road Initiative, a massive investment in renewable energy, while rapidly expanding its military forces, posing challenges to the region. At home, he has increasingly veered the nation of 1.4 billion towards authoritarianism, cracking down on dissent and reining in the private sector. Olivier Salazar-Winspear takes a look at how he has come to be China's strongman. He's shaping up to be the most powerful leader China's had since Mao Zedong. But Xi Jinping had a bumpy path to the top spot. Born in 1953, Xi's father was one of the Communist Party's founding members and a former vice premier. But his family's fortunes took a turn for the worse when Mao ordered a purge of potential rivals to see off any rebellions in the party ranks. His father was imprisoned in 1962, and at 15, she was sent to the countryside for re-education and forced labor. This early hardship did little to dissuade him from the Communist Party, though. He was allowed to join it in 1974, and since then, she has worked his way through the ranks, finally being picked as China's president in 2012. During his rule, Xi has consolidated power and removed the two-term limit for presidents, which in theory allows him to remain in his role indefinitely. Day to day, he's also tightened control over nearly all aspects of life in China, overseeing a profound change in how the country is run. When Xi came in, the previous leader, Hu Jintao, was seen as being too weak because he was a consensus leader and he delegated power. Xi Jinping centralized power in his own office and, and focused on trying to make the party much more proud of itself as a party. Under Xi's rule, China has established re-education camps in Xinjiang for its Uyghur and other ethnic minority groups. NGOs say they're rife with human rights abuses. Xi has also overseen a brutal crackdown on pro-democracy movements in Hong Kong and vowed to reunite with Taiwan, using force if necessary. Beijing's also cracked down on dissent at home. Journalist and Chinese dissident Ho Pin has been covering the Communist Party for years. He says the biggest danger facing the country is that Xi turns into a lifelong dictator surrounded by yes-men. China's policy has great continuity, and the advantage of this is it's conducive to the stability of China's policy. The disadvantage is we are very afraid, many people are afraid, that he really becomes a man who never steps down. In a clear sign of Xi's influence and importance, in 2017, the Communist Party voted to write his philosophy into its constitution. 
Only Chairman Mao and Deng Xiaoping, who introduced economic reforms, have been accorded this high honour. Well, Charles, uh, traditionally the Party Congress has served as a venue for a Chinese leader to pass on the powers to a carefully groomed successor. Uh, but President Xi Jinping is set to break with that system. He's been carefully laying the groundwork uh, for it over the past few years. Absolutely. And even beyond the fact that he uh, lifted uh, term limits on the role of president, he's worked very hard over the years to place himself at the very heart of uh, political and ideological life in the country in a way that makes him an indispensable part of the Chinese nation. He, the ideological framework of uh, Xi Jinping thought is a great example of this. Uh, it's the label attached to most government policy, so it gives him all the credit when it works. And if the people criticize the policies, they're not just criticizing the policies, they're criticizing him, and by extension, the Chinese nation. So this leads him to being surrounded by a very loyal yes-men um, who are uh, then promoted to positions of power. And for those who need to be um, forced to be more loyal, well, there are um, struggle sessions or sessions of self-criticism within the party where it's drilled into them uh, to be loyal to Xi Jinping and to adhere to his policies. So all this has been carefully choreographed over the years. Now, under his domestic ideology, common prosperity, President Xi Jinping has taken a very firm stance against corruption. Now, has he managed to root out corruption? Well, he was actually picked as a leader because he was seen as ideologically pure. He is the son of a revolutionary hero, so he was seen as someone who was likely to root out corruption. And he did just that. As of April 2022, uh, 4.7 million officials have been uh, investigated in an anti-corruption campaign. And this includes, obviously, some rivals, people like uh, Bo Xilai or Sun Zheng Tsai, which uh, allowed him to replace these uh, unfortunate rivals with people who are loyal to him. And um, low-level corruption is not as much of a problem as it was at the beginning of his tenure, thanks to that uh, uh, campaign. Uh, but there are doubts about corruption at the highest level, including uh, people within his own, own, his own entourage or his relatives, uh, with some doubts of some assets that have been uh, illegally uh, acquired there. So it's a careful balancing act for uh, Xi Jinping, and obviously economy uh, is a big subject. Now, after years of double-digit growth, China's economic expansion slowed down, but was going strong under Xi Jinping until the coronavirus pandemic put a huge break on that. While much of the world has reopened, Beijing continues its strict restrictions. With last-minute lockdowns and constant PCR testing, our reporters went to see what life is like in zero-COVID China. This is what China's zero-COVID policy looks like from the inside. Filmed inside a human mouth, viewers get a unique perspective into what hundreds of millions of people in China go through every day. The creator is artist Su Yuan Juji. We do these tests so often now they've become part of our daily lives. The artist has been questioning this new normal. He says he will film these tests for as long as they're mandatory to access public spaces. I don't want to criticize anything. I just want to show the reality to the public, so people can make up their own minds. To live in China means to obey health restrictions. Residents here can be locked up at any moment in the name of anti-COVID measures. And ahead of the Chinese Communist Party's Congress, authorities haven't been taking any risks. Earlier this month, men clad in PPE closed down an entire airport because of 30 cases in the region. There are hundreds of people trapped inside. We can't take a plane nor leave the airport. Further west, the whole of Xinjiang province is under a strict lockdown, even though some districts have zero cases. This man was holidaying in the city of Kashgar. He has been stuck there now for 10 days. There are no COVID cases here. The whole city was tested the past seven days. There's no valid reason to lock people up in their homes. I have no idea when I'll be able to leave. In Shanghai, an eerie sense of déjà vu. Barricades are once again being erected around apartment buildings. Last spring, the city was locked down for two entire months. I arrived here this morning for a cleaning job and the police are telling us to stay. We can't leave. Meanwhile, the capital, Beijing, has become almost inaccessible for the rest of the country. As with every party congress, security is tight. 
but COVID-19 has become another reason for authorities to restrict movement during the highly sensitive political event. Shall this zero COVID policy has really taken a toll on the population as well as on the economy, hasn't it? Absolutely. Uh, his political, Xi Jinping's political position is very secure, but there's no shortage of economic challenges ahead. First of all, this dynamic zero COVID policy, as it's called in China, with the factory shutdowns that it leads to. And the question is here, uh, is China capable of bearing yet another wave of lockdowns if there's a new variant of the, vi of the virus that shows up? But on top of that, there's a, a youth unemployment employment rate that stands uh, at 19 percent. That's extremely worrying, especially because it's coupled with a young generation in China that seems to be disengaged with professional life because of a lack of prospects. And on top of that, there's a real estate crisis, which represents 20 to 30 percent of China's GDP, with huge groups, uh, groups that are overburdened with bad debt. And this is a huge uh, weight on the economy. And finally, there's the demographic a crisis with an aging population, low birth rates, a shrinking work workforce, which is really uh, posing a huge economic challenge uh, to China in the future. All of this could lead to social instability, which is the last thing that the government wants to see. And we're seeing hints of that already happening this week in Beijing. Ahead of the Congress, we saw a banner being unfurled uh, in the northwest uh, um, suburbs of Beijing, asking for a change in the COVID policy and asking asking for Xi Jinping to be ousted as leader. So this is uh, quite a new a kind of very direct uh, a response uh, to, to Xi Jinping as a leader that we've not seen before. Mm. So really a mountain of challenges awaiting the new Chinese leadership. Shao, thank you so much for your analysis. Now that's it for this edition of Access Asia. Please do stay tuned to France 24. There's more bold news coming up.